First thing we have to do for this question is to convert the 100 kilometers per hour into meters per second. So we first write it as an improper fraction. And we know that for every one hour, there are 3,600 seconds. And if you didn't know that, that's okay. You know that there are 60 minutes in one hour and there are 60 seconds in one minute and you can work it out the longer way. You'll still arrive to the same answer at the end. And also there's a thousand meters in one kilometer. So after you've gone through all these calculations, that would work out to 27.78 meters per second. So we know that our givens is that our velocity is equal to 27.78 meters per second and our distance is 16 meters and we're trying to look for time. D is equal to V delta T so delta T is equal to delta D divided by V. So a distance of 16 meters divided by 27.78 meters per second would work out to an answer of 0 0.5760 seconds. However, when you take a look at your givens, the first measurement is four sig fig, but the second measured is only two sig fig, so our final answer should just, should just be 0 0.58 seconds. So for this question here, we probably want to convert our minutes into seconds. So 0 0.297 minutes times and again, we want to make sure that minutes is in the denominator so that they'll divide each other out. If you want to write the first value as an improper fraction, uh, that's fine. All right, so then one minute, there are 60 seconds. Crunch through that, and you get 17.820 seconds as your numerical reference. So your time is equal to 17.820 seconds, and your distance we can mentally convert this into meters, which is 8864 meters south. We're trying to look for speed, or velocity in this case here. Velocity is equal to displacement over time. So 8864 meters south divided by 17.820 seconds. That will give us an answer initially of 497.42 meters per second south. But again, looking at your givens, 4 sig fig and 3 sig fig, your final answer should just be 3 sig fig. So 497 meters per second south would be your final answer. Let's figure out how far they travel in three minutes. So the speed of insect A travels at 5.0 meters per minute. And the speed of B travels at 9.0 centimeters per second. And the time that we have for this activity is 3.0 minutes. Now, since the second insect has to travel uh, in, se in seconds, we need to convert that. So let's just quickly convert that right now. 3.0 minutes over 1 times, again, you'll need to make sure minutes is in the denominator so that they divide each other out, and there are 60 seconds in 1 minute. This works out to 180 seconds. Now we can calculate out how far each of them have traveled. So insect A is equal to VA delta T, which is equal to 5.0 meters per minute times 3 minutes, which works out to 15.0 meters, uh, 2 sig fig, so we'll just leave it at 15 meters. As for DB, which is equal to VB times delta T, that is 9.0 centimeters per second times 180 seconds. And that works out to 1620 centimeters, which is equal to 16.2 meters. So if we try to look for, and I'm sorry I ran out of space, if we look for the, dis the difference between these two values, that's equal to delta dB minus delta dA. which is equal to 16.2 meters minus 15.0 meters, and that leaves us with 1.2 meters. 
So therefore, insect B leads by 1.2 meters. So we don't really know how fast person A is walking, but we know that VA is equal to 2VB. We also know that um, the initial position of B is equal to 20.0 meters, so DIB. If person A, oh, they tell you, okay, VA travels at 3.0 meters per second, figure out how far they are after 20.0 seconds. So to figure out how fast VB is traveling, we just rearrange the equation, which is equal to VA divided by two. In other words, 3.0 meters per second divided by two, which gives you 1.5 meters per second. And that's true. Person A walks twice as fast as person B. All right. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that when you state the formula like this, delta D is equal to V delta T. Delta D, by definition, is final position minus initial position, which is equal to V delta T. So technically speaking, we can figure out where someone is based upon their speed times time on top of where they started. Okay, And you know that for DB, that's equal to 1.5 meters per second times 20 point zero seconds and again person B had a head start of 20 meters so that works out to 30 meters plus 20 meters which equals 50 meters now let's try to figure out person A person A again is equal to V delta T plus DI person A is traveling at 3.0 meters per second for a duration of 20 seconds, but again, it's starting at the reference point of zero, and that will give you 60 meters. And we can see that dA is greater than dB. All right, so person A starts from position zero, and after 20 seconds, we said that he would travel a total of 60 meters. Of course, we'll be doing this properly using a ruler, I'll try to sketch the best I can. So that is for person A. Or friend A. As for friend B, starts off at 20 meters, and we stayed at the 20 second mark, that person finishes off at the 50 meter mark. So for person B, it would look something more like that. Again, if you were to draw this properly using a ruler, we'd have more exact results. We start off with our givens. D1 is equal to 10.0 meters east. D2 is equal to 5.0 meters east. D3 is equal to 30.0 meters west. T1 is equal to 2.0 seconds. T2 is equal to 1.5 seconds. And T3 is equal to 5.0 seconds. To figure out average velocity, we need to figure out the total distance, or the total displacement, and divide it by the total time. So, the total displacement is equal to D1 plus D2 plus D3. So, 10.0 meters east plus 5.0 meters east plus 30 meters west, which is also equal to negative 10 meters west minus 5 meters west plus 30 meters west minus, time, minus 10 minus 5 gives you minus 15 plus 30 gives you 15 meters west as for total time that's equal to time 1 plus time 2 plus time 3 so 2 seconds plus 1.5 seconds plus 5.0 seconds gives you 8.5 seconds. So to find out your velocity, your velocity is your displacement, total displacement over total time. So a total displacement of 15 meters west divided by 
8.5 seconds gives you 1.7647 meters per second to the west. Taking a look at your givens, the worst case scenario is two sig figs, so that will round up to 1.8 meters per second to the west. And that would be your final answer. Alright, so, alright, as you can see it's really buggy today. That's alright, we'll just continue with this. So, this is our position in meters, and we'll lead in uh, 10, 20, 30, no, 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 we'll do 5, do 5, 10, and 15, negative 5, negative 10, negative 15. So, in the first 1.5 seconds, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You don't have to label every single dot, every single axis. Okay, so the first travels 10 meters east in 2 seconds, which we right here. Then 5 meters east in one and a half seconds, which is right there. And then travels 30 meters in 5 seconds from this point over here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That'll be somewhere down here. And the graph would look something like, not like that, maybe more like that. Yeah, again, technology is not working with me today. I'll just let it be. Okay, so then your position time graph would look something like that, probably a bit neater. For the graph on the right, describe the motion of the object. Initially, the person moves, what is it, six meters ahead in the first four and a half seconds. Then the person takes a one and a half second break. Finally, the person walks in the opposite direction for a total distance of two, four, six, eight, and I think that's nine meters backwards. So that's the motion of the object. Moving six forward, sorry, moving six meters forwards in the positive direction, pausing for about one and a half seconds, and then walking backwards for about nine meters. So when you try to determine the object's displacement, you could do six minus nine, which will give you negative three, or just by simply looking off at the graph, the person finishes off at negative three meters. So that's the person's displacement. Delta D is equal to negative three meters. If we had a direction for this, we would not leave the minus sign here. But since there's no direction associated with our final answer, we just leave it as a minus sign. For an object traveling in uniform motion, again, the definition of uniform motion means an object traveling at a constant velocity or at a constant speed in the same direction. So, if this person is experiencing uniform motion, what this tells us is that the person is traveling the same distance for every interval of time, or the same displacement per unit time in the same direction. And that's it.